Warm greetings from New York. I send this message about leadership in the United Nations at a time of several ongoing global crises which have showcased the importance of effective leadership, not simply as an aspiration, but a lived practice. I congratulate all of you for your continued efforts to further develop your skills through training opportunities such as this one. We are going through a conflagration of challenges. First and more obviously, a global health crisis, which has highlighted a number of pre-existing economic and social disparities. The impact of climate change is becoming more evident every year. We are also witnessing the renewed tension between big powers, as well as continued challenges of new and complex regional and internal conflicts, often against the backdrop of terrorism and violent extremism. Civilians are the victims. Millions continue to be displaced and in despair. The ongoing war in Ukraine, triggered by the Russian invasion, is the most recent tragic case in point. We are, as the UN Secretary General has stated, at an inflection point in history. And all the underscored problems have laid bare the deep-rooted, structural and systemic inequalities and forms of discrimination across the globe. Addressing these challenges in the short run, while setting the ground for an equitable, people-centered recovery in the long run, lies at the heart of our shared peace-building challenge. The need to tackle the root causes of conflict in a sustainable manner. In my own field of disarmament, we recognize that effective disarmament and progress towards a better world depends on all voices being heard. This in turn depends on genuine inclusivity and on removing the straitjacket of discrimination. It also requires working to end the conflicts that would otherwise detract from our strategic goals through impeding people's ability to engage on global issues. In other words, we must not only recover from the COVID-19 pandemic and its various impacts, but must address the rest of these serious issues and build back better towards common security and prosperity. For the United Nations to succeed in this challenging context, whilst embodying inspired and inspiring leadership within the system is critical to be able to serve the peoples of the world. The Secretary General has recently committed to develop a new agenda for peace, an urgently needed new vision to make the world a safer and more secure place. I don't think the essence of leadership at the United Nations is that different from the general facets of leadership, but as you know, there are some specific features of our organization. We are value-driven, meaning that all staff, from the Secretary General on down, are to be guided by the norms, principles, and spirit enshrined in the United Nations Charter and other international laws. We prioritize a people-centered approach, which follows from the fact that we are, by definition, a multinational, multicultural, and multilingual organization, which embraces and enjoys the richness of diversity and sees it as a strength. We are a complex system of organizations composed of the UN Secretariat, specialized agencies and other agencies, funds and programs, covering a multitude of mandates to tackle various challenges. And as it is often forgotten, the UN Secretariat is one of the six organs of the United Nations. And as such, we do have an extensive level of delegated authority, space, and independence entrusted to us 
incomparable to any other international intergovernmental organization. Having said that, let me suggest three key elements of leadership at the United Nations. They are all interrelated and, in my view, all necessary for a successful UN leader. The first key feature of UN leadership relates to leading crafting of vision and a strategy for the team, office, or department he or she leads. As a leader, you should not drift nor thoughtlessly hew to the old approaches. They may indeed be the best way forward, but if so, they will withstand the scrutiny of reassessment. As a leader, you need to allow and indeed encourage innovation and creativity to identify and test new approaches based on solid analysis of the situation you are confronted with and the potential capacity of your office to address it. The world is going through a major transformation and the conflict, humanitarian situations or development challenges you are tackling as a UN leader are never static. Therefore, neither should you be. You should have the courage to be open-minded to considering something new and you must be risk-taking, although with adequate risk mitigation measures. This is how new visions and strategies are developed and this is how progress is made. At the same time, you should be guided by data, evidence and facts and driven by strategic objectives. As a concrete example, I knew a visionary UN leader who started a non-political activity of civilian casualty recording work in Afghanistan many years ago. This effort eventually resulted in the complete change of targeting procedures in NATO operations, opened dialogue opportunities with the Taliban, and now serves as an inspiration for a political declaration on limiting the use of explosive weapons in populated areas at the General Assembly. And needless to say, a good vision and judgment is only possible if you know the strength of UN entities and take full advantage of the richness that the diversity of our organization brings. At the same time, you must also be willing to fail, to learn from your mistakes and to engage in critical self-reflection. A second important facet of UN leadership is your ability to inspire people, enable your team and build alliances and coalitions, thus creating a force multiplier impact. When you're dealing with a kind of almost impossible challenges we are working on at the UN, even the most effective leader cannot achieve success alone. Your success depends on your team members working with you to stay and deliver, even under the most challenging of circumstances. To bring out the best in your team, you must draw on your managerial capacity of understanding the potential of your team members and creating space for them to fully bring them out. It is also extremely important that you have the trust and the confidence of your team members. Be considerate of their needs. This was one of the key features of the leadership of Mrs. Sadako Ogata, former United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. Everyone wanted to work with her and to be part of the team accomplishing the vision she laid out. Communication is key. But communication is not about telling others what you want. It is also about listening to other perspectives and having dialogues, whilst at the same time being willing and being able to take responsibility for the decisions that are yours. Finally, 
there is the importance of leading by example. The fact that when you are in a leadership position, you are always leading by example. There is no avoiding it. The only question is what type of example you are setting. Your actions and your behaviors set the standard for others. They set the tone and the culture of your working environment, and they have an impact that goes further than you might imagine. A good leader demands no more of those they lead than themselves are willing to undertake. They embody the values of the UN, as they expect those who work under them to do. In so doing, you will show yourself to be credible and deserving of trust and respect by your peers, by those above you and those below. Let me conclude by saying a few things about you as a leader, but also as a person who commands that respect from others. Unfortunately, the challenges you will be tackling cannot be resolved overnight. They need a series of sustained efforts, combining various policies and instruments. But the first step as a UN leader is to have empathy and sympathy towards people who are suffering and to express your solidarity with them. Be humble, honest, and sincere, especially when you're not able to solve the challenges immediately or easily. Be courageous in upholding the values that guide our work at the United Nations. Maintain your calm in the crisis, even when you're faced with seemingly impossible demands. Be civil to cope with the increasingly divided world with social media full of fake news and personal attacks. And finally, be kind to your team to your peers, and to yourself. I will end with the words of Doug Hammarskjöld, one of my hero leaders, from his New Year's message as broadcast over United Nations Radio on the 31st of December, 1953. Our work for peace must begin within the private world of each one of us to build for man a world without fear, we must be without fear. To build a world of justice, we must be just. And how can we fight for liberty if we are not free in our own minds? How can we ask others to sacrifice if we're not ready to do so? Some might consider this to be just another expression of noble principles, too far from the harsh realities of political life. I disagree. I wish you best of luck in your training course.